Okay, quite possibly one of the most important things that all webmasters need to know as you're starting out your webmaster role is the SP help site. And uh, this is the address for your SharePoint tutorial site that is specifically geared towards just about every single thing you would ever need to know regarding um, your CMS SharePoint website. Uh, a lot of people put tickets in for things that are actually covered in depth on this website, so please uh, make sure you look on the left side here uh, just to verify that the issue you're having isn't already covered over here. Um, for example, one thing we get um, a lot of requests for is hooking the globe up on the faculty and staff page to the teacher's classroom site. And um, as you can see, we have a very detailed uh, tutorial uh, here on hooking that up. Um, another one we get a lot of is uh, webmaster request. Starting uh, the school year of 2017-18, principals no longer have to put in sharewell tickets. All they have to do is uh, go to their school role contact list and um, basically just assign the correct individual the webmaster role. Uh, if they have any issues with that, there's actually a YouTube video that uh, the web team has put together for that. But once again, if you have any questions um, before putting your ticket in, please make sure you visit the help site sphelp.cms.k12.nc.us Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, the principals no longer have to put uh, ShareWell My Support tickets in for webmaster changes at the school level. That's only done in one place and it needs to be done by the principal. So um, I'm going to show you real quick where that happens. The principal will need to go to the directory go to the school contact information button they will choose their school give that one second to populate <clears throat> and then they scroll to the very bottom of that list you'll see the webmaster position um, they will click on the edit icon and in this location is where they will choose the webmaster to be added or removed um, right here and let's say that um, Margaret was going to be uh, removed as webmaster, just delete her, and if you were to add somebody else, go ahead and type their CMS email address. And once you click OK, the web team will get an automatic notification. We'll make that person a webmaster and send them a onboarding welcome email um, with directions on editing their site. Okay, one of the most important things for you to understand in your webmaster roles is the concept of pages being checked out, checked in, and published. And we have a very detailed help page on SP Help, um, checking out, checking in, and publishing that um, not only do we have a YouTube video, but we have very um, detailed screenshots of the checkout and check-in process. Uh, if you're a new webmaster, this happens quite a bit. You come to a page and you can't edit it. Um, check the top. If there's a yellow bar up here uh, and someone's name is in there, uh, you're going to have to contact that person to ask them to check it in. Uh, how do you know if the pages are checked out? Go to your site contents, go to pages, and you'll see all the pages that are in your SharePoint folders. And you'll see a column over here called checked out too. If anyone's name is in that column, they have that page checked out. So this is a quick way to find out all the pages in your website that are checked out to someone else. If your name is in that column, you need to check that page in and publish it. So here, Holly um, at Beverly Woods has quite a few pages checked out. No other webmaster other than Holly could actually edit those pages, so she would need to check those pages back in. So if you can't edit a page for some reason, um, always make sure in your browser bar that you are at the authoring URL. Uh, and if you are and can't edit a page, most likely another individual has that page checked out. So always double check that column. And once again, that's found under Site Contents, then Pages, and check that column. Okay, we're going to discuss probably one of the simplest things to manage on your SharePoint uh, homepage that's also probably one of the most misunderstood, and that is the announcements and calendar events um, on your homepage. 
first it's very important to understand that you do not edit on this page. Um, a lot of people think that they come down to their site settings gear, edit page, and they try to manipulate the information in these two boxes. That is not where that happens. So I'm going to show you how to take care of your announcements and calendar events quickly. Also too, if you have inherited a website where you have old announcements in the list over here, I'm going to show you how that happens. Um, you know, here we have some dates from 2016, 15, and way back to 2011. If you have old dates in there, there's a very easy explanation on why that happens, and you'll see that here in a second. So, the first thing we're going to do is the calendar events. Very simple. Go to your site contents, go to your school calendar, and just for example, um, right now it's August 24th, there's an open house here, but let's say we had an event uh, on the 29th. Click on the date. A dialog box will pop up and just fill this information out um, according to your specific event. Um, once you do that, it will populate immediately on the calendar real time. So that's where the calendar events are managed. Same thing for your announcements. Go to your site contents. That brings you here. Go to announcements. And these are the five announcements that you currently see on the home page of that school site. Let's go ahead and click on this one way back on August uh, 1st, 2011. We're going to edit the item. So click on these three dots, edit the item. And this is exactly, this area right here always needs to be filled out. If you do not put an expiration date in this box, it will indefinitely leave that item up there on the website. So all you need to do if you want, if you have an old item, that you want off of the announcements, just simply put any date before today. So if today is August 24th, I'm going to put August 23rd. Save that. Um, it comes out of my list. And if I click up here to go back to my home page, you will now see that my old August 11th event is now gone. So real quick, I'm actually going to go in here, back to the announcements, and I am going to put a date, any date, before today. And I'm going to just keep going back to all of these old items. Edit the item. Put an expiration date in there. and now go back and there is no save on this page all your changes happen immediately I'm gonna go back to my announcements page and now all my old announcements are now gone so that's how you remove old announcements and don't forget that you do not edit announcements on the page you do that in site contents under announcements and under school calendar Okay, the next topic we're going to talk about is the faculty and staff page. Um, before I begin on uh, how we hook the globe up to a particular teacher or staff member, um, it's very important for me to explain that none of the information on this page can be edited by the web team or you. Everything on this page comes in automatically uh, overnight from whatever is reflected in the HR Lawson database. So if there's anything wrong on this list, either a misspelling, uh, a, a, an incorrect grade listing, an incorrect title, um, that has to go to HR. That is not a help ticket to the um, SharePoint Services desk. So please understand that this um, list does not get edited by you. The only part of this whole page that the webmaster controls is actually hooking this globe up. So let's go ahead and get into that. Um, first off, we have a extremely detailed help page on this on the SP Help site, adding a teacher's website to the faculty page. But um, what I'm going to do is just go through this quickly with you, um, just so it's in this video. So let's say, for example, Nina Adams uh, was a teacher. Granted, she's an assistant principal, but let's say it's a teacher. She comes to you and says, I would like this particular web address to be on the faculty and staff page. So the first thing you're going to need is the address of her classroom site. This is just a sample site that I found. Um, you'll need the complete URL of the site she is calling her classroom site. Once you have that, 
that's step one step two is that you must make sure you have their CMS email correct so I go to the directory and I'm going to highlight that teacher's name and just copy that control C or right click and copy once you have that information do not click edit page that is not where you edit this you want to go to site contents go to faculty once you're on this page go up to items and we're going to create a new item you are going to paste in that teachers website um, and in this example just to keep it as short as possible we're just going to do dreambox.com but keep in mind that will always be the teachers personal classroom site um, description is not needed you do not need to fill out the school areas but this is the most important part you must make sure that the email matches exactly because this is what the system double checks to actually connect the globe to that site so once we have the email address and we have the personal classroom site we click save and we're going to come back to the faculty and staff page and we will now see a globe by her name okay so that is completely hooked up now and we're connected if you ever need to edit that list um, if you have a teacher maybe Nicole Sparrow comes to the webmaster and says I no longer want my classroom site up there so you simply go back into site contents go to the faculty page um, find her name in the list um, let's see I'm having trouble finding it just for the point of we're going to go ahead and delete the sample that I set up just come in here and the big X at the top delete the item go ahead and delete that and go back to your home page and faculty and staff and now we've disconnected the globe and that's all there is to it keep in mind that we do not change names titles um, on the faculty and staff page that has to be an HR issue your only responsibility as a webmaster is to hook that globe up if you have any questions uh, with more detailed screenshots please make sure you see adding a teacher's website to the faculty page on SP help In this video we're going to be discussing the mission statement area. Uh, as a webmaster you actually have control over changing that so if you wanted to change that throughout the school year or possibly notice the typo this is exactly how you go about making changes to your school mission. So you're going to edit the page and the mission statement actually sits in what's called a web part. This school mission title right here does not uh, that is not shown to the public. Um, click on this very small black arrow in the upper right edit the web part and our mission is the heading and this is where the body is so if you wanted to make changes to either of those uh, all I'm going to do for the point of the tutorial is put a statement at the end of mission once you've made those changes scroll down to the bottom of that dialog box you will see OK and once that's done you will see statement there do not forget to check your page in and publish it and you are completed with your school mission statement.